time has come, the walrus said. Oh my god, I can't believe it. This is the first time we're hearing that boot up sound on this channel. The most iconic of boot up sounds aside from maybe the GameCube. You gotta admit, it's it's great. This is a PlayStation 1 game, we're finally here. And what do you know? We got Capcom. Check out this fancy new animation. Yeah. Capcom, who made the Mega Man and Street Fighter series, was establishing a new title on the PlayStation 1. A horror-themed one. A brand new franchise known as... Resident Evil. Oh man, it's time, Resident Evil. Uh, this is very early PlayStation 1. In fact, the original version of this game comes with a big rectangle jewel case, when most PlayStation 1 games would later come out on small square ones. This is also the original version. There was later a director's cut version that changed a lot of stuff, like the music and some of the controls here and there. But I'm playing the original just because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go as classic and pure as I could for this series. I love me some Resident Evil, so I'm excited to get into this. I hope you guys are excited to be watching here today. And, well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Uh, being on the PlayStation 1, they can work with a lot more that they couldn't work with on the Super Nintendo or even the N64, like live action. You see the intro cutscene here where the guy's real? There it is, the iconic sound. Yeah, but they use live action stuff in this. I mean, these are real-ass people we have in the character select. Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield. Very, very different playthroughs. I might have to do an extra part for this game just showing off the differences. I'm going to be going with Chris playthrough, but again, extra part, we'll show off what's different about Jill. There's a lot different about Jill's playthrough, but I'm going Chris. That's what we're going to we're gonna go with. I mean, Chris is the playthrough I prefer. It's a little harder, but it's also what I'm used to. 1998 in July, technically the future when this game came out. Raccoon Forest. Oh, check out this intro cutscene, my god. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of our mission. Okay, so we're part of a team. Our murder cases oh, yeah. have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. Bravo team went to the hideout of the group and disappeared. Look, Chris! So yeah, we're part of the STARS group, a special military group or police group sent in to deal with the situation going on in Raccoon City here. One team already went in and has gone missing. We're now going into the forest where they were at, just to try and investigate, see what's going on. It was Bravo Team's helicopter. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. However, we soon discovered why. So here we have all the members. There's Chris, that's who we're playing as. The lady in the beret was Jill. Guy in shades. We'll, we'll meet them all properly. Oh, snap. Look at this horror-ass horror. Uh-oh. Just found something. The dogs are getting him. Oh my god, the mouth shots. Joseph! Not Joseph! Some of the acting is, you know, well, anyway. Gotta appreciate Wesker, by the way, the guy who's in charge, wearing sunglasses out in this dark, dark night in the middle of the forest. Oh, and the helicopter leaves us behind. Thanks a lot, Brad. So that sleeps Chris, Jill, Wesker, and the other guy, Barry, down here to deal with these ferocious dogs. Jill, run for that house! We arrive at this house. Very mysterious house. Definitely not haunted or evil, and the, the, the looming dogs are a threat. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. We don't know where Barry is. Oh, cast time, here we go. We're actually gonna cast Chris, Chris Redfield. Redfield. Oh, he said he does it for me. <laughs> it has all this information, it doesn't say the actor or actress who played these characters, but yeah. Barry's just gone mysteriously missing. Barry, Barry. There he is. Yeah, we won't be seeing him for the rest of the game, sorry to say. Albert 
Basilisk. Look at that man's hair and the shades and everything. That man has some style. <laughs> Resident Evil. Boom. Explosive intro, exciting intro, live action, voice acting. They have escaped into the mansion where they thought it was safe. Yet, as we arrive. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's pretty clear. There were dogs that tried to kill us. Baron, where's Baron? Well, I'm sorry, but he's probably... <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay. You'll notice the voice acting is not great. Oh, there's a gunshot. What is that? I'll go and check. Okay, Jill and I will stay in the hall in case of an emergency. All right. Chris is going to go off on his own. That usually doesn't go well in horror. Chris, take care. Okay, maybe it'll go well now. No, Chris just waves. Yeah, the voice acting, not great, even for its time. It's a little, little iffy. Oh, check out, we got this door opening sequence. So, okay, this game really wanted to make use of the two main aspects here. We're dealing with survival horror Clock Tower style, which we played Clock Tower on the channel. If you haven't seen my playthrough, I did it last year, actually, as a Halloween celebration, just like I'm doing now. And Clock Tower was an amazing survival horror experience where you're dealing with the atmosphere, the sounds, the mystery, you know, multiple paths and all that stuff. This game is the same thing, but now we're dealing with three dimensions. Every time we go in one of these doors, as I'll show you, we're in a first-person mode as we watch as the door slowly ekes open. And who knows what's on the other side? The game becomes silent before the door shuts and we carry through. How's it going, guys? Investigate if you hear any gunfire. Right, yeah, I probably should go investigate. You're right. Sorry, Wesker, I'll, I'll do what you say. You're in charge, after all. But yeah. Now, being 3D, we're dealing with tank controls. Originally, this is on PlayStation 1 with this controller, and it works great on PlayStation 1 because, you know, the D-pad buttons are individual. I'm actually not doing it on the original PlayStation 1. I'm doing it on an emulator, so I have my Super Nintendo controller as usual. It still works just about as fine, but we hold forward to go forward, back to go back, and left and right simply turn left and right. They do not go left and right. In order to go left and right, you have to turn yourself and then hit forward. Kind of tricky controls to get used to at first. You know, it's it's different. I myself had a lot of trouble getting used to these controls, I will admit. And especially when you're dealing with camera angles. I'm not controlling anything about the camera. Just as soon as we enter a certain vicinity, the camera angle will change. Like as soon as we reach the edge of the screen, and boom, we're in a different view. And sometimes that changes the direction you're going. It can be difficult to deal with. I understand this control scene being difficult to go back to. But once you master it, this game becomes so good. I honestly got to think this is one of the best games on the PlayStation 1. And it's a pretty damn early entry, too. Dusty looking grandfather clock. I don't think we're doing anything with that. Uh, otherwise, control-wise, uh, let's see. We have a knife on us, a combat knife. And I love the menu here, how we can equip things, combine things, check things just to get a good look at them. If we really want to check it out in 3D, look at that. That's fun. But, um, yeah, we're, when we're in the overworld, now we have that knife equipped because we equipped it in the, the menus there. And if we hold down the right bumper, we can now enter a combat stance where hitting the interact button becomes an attack button. We can even aim in different directions. Uh, otherwise, there's not too much else to note. Uh, hit, holding down 1, or square in the PlayStation's case, allows us to run as we move. Very important for getting around quicker. And then, of course, we have the interact button at the bottom. And just cross on the PlayStation. Will you take the emblem? It's the fire emblem! Fire, fire emblem! emblem. And actually, I'm, I'm not going to take the fire emblem. This is one of the key differences that makes Chris harder than Jill. Jill has eight inventory spots. Chris only has six. So you got to be careful with what you hold on to. Sometimes we can put things back... You know, inventory is a whole thing with Chris. Carrying on through here. Just pure silence. I love it, man. And then we've got... This one's locked from inside. That's always telling us that we're, we're supposed to come from that room, not go in that way. Uh, this one's locked from inside as well. This one's locked, but it has a carving of a sword on the keyhole. That tells us that we need a sword-themed key. We'll come back to that. What do we got up this part of the hall? We have... We have this horrifying creature eating something in the ground. Ooh, that sound! And blood spews out. He's got blood in his mouth. Talk about an iconic scene right here. We have a zombie. A real zombie. Get that motherfucker. Oh god, he's biting me. Am I gonna be a zombie now? Well, that's not how this universe works, but... We stabbed him enough and he falls down. But he's not done. He's just faking it. 
That bastard. Oh god, oh god, I should have been bit a lot. Uh, I'm in caution health, I think I can take maybe one more attack from him. Just finish him off. There we go. Is he down yet? No, he's still not down, my god. The knife, so useless. Uh, I'm in danger. I'm gonna use this first aid spray I have. There's really no reason to kill the zombie, I just want to kill it because it's the first zombie in the game. And so I wanted to, to put it in its place. And we had to use our first aid spray to do it. Oh well, that's fine. We find the body he was eating. He's Kenneth from the Star's Bravo team. I don't know what the Bravo team who came here before us. They made it to the mansion. Mm, looks like now he's become a mere shadow of his former self. Uh, is that how you put it? I'm pretty sure he has on him some important items. Yes. He has a clip. I think he has two, actually. Search him again, Chris. Yeah. It's good to find these clips. We don't have a gun for the clip, but it's good that we got these. Yeah, we're dealing with zombies here, and, and very strong zombies. This is not your Call of Duty Left 4 Dead hordes of zombies coming in. This is Resident Evil zombies. These guys are ruthless bastards. Well, anyway, we investigated. It was a dead Kenneth, who presumably just died now because we heard the gunshot. I don't know. Guys, Wesker, what do you think? Uh-oh. It seems Jill? they got horror movied. There are a lot of, like, horror movie tropes and, and such in this that are kind of cheesy, but kind of fun at the same time. It's classic, you know. What happened to Jill and Wesker? I guess we'll have to find out, Chris. Here on the ground we find... It's Jill's gun! There we go, something for our clips. We take the Beretta, I sure will. Uh, the whole bunch of these doors we can't go in. This one, this one's locked with a carving of armor. So not the same as the sword door, but different, you know. This one over here we can go in. Double doors. I like, by the way, the doors in the cutscene. They match up with the ones in, in the world itself. Uh, over here... Uh, we can't go in that door. I'm pretty sure this door is locked with sword key, right? Lock oh, carving of sword, yeah. Over here... Uh, there's a guy on the floor who's definitely still alive. Get up, mister. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Bust his head, Chris. There you go. <laughs> Still fine, okay. This was over... What did, what did we get here? Oh, yes, yes, we have ink ribbons. Ink ribbons, we have exactly two of them. I forgot there were some in that main hall there. I can go back and get them in just a moment. Because, I mean, we're at a dead end. There's just ink ribbons over here, and like I showed you, this door is locked. We can, while we're here, push this staircase over and get that parchment up there that the statue seems to be hoisting up high. We can climb up, Chris. I like some of the puzzles where you got to push stuff. Uh, map of the first floor, we will take it, hell yeah. So now we can go here, look at map. Uh, there we are, we can see rooms we've been in. I do wish there was some kind of, like, map key to show you what doors were locked behind what key, or whether they were locked from the other side, like, that would be a lot more helpful. Uh, but this is so useful, just for frame of reference of where we are and where we have yet to go. Well, let's go back out into the main hall where Jill and Wesker went missing. We've suddenly become a detective, haven't we? We're trying to figure out what's going on in the mansion, what's going on with all of stars, right? We can go behind the staircase, I'm pretty sure, but there's yeah, there's nothing back here. Oh well. And yeah, I, I meant to show this earlier, but there's ink ribbons here at the, the desk as well. Might as well pick these up. We have four now. Ink ribbons are an essential, essential item to get. You can save your progress with this typewriter. We'll use an ink ribbon. Yeah, so when it says use an ink ribbon, it means use an ink ribbon. Like, it's gone now. So, you have a limited number of saves, and you have to be careful with when and where you save. I'm gonna save kind of randomly. I mean, of course, I'm gonna go no data here. Of course, also, I'm, you know, recording this in an emulator. I can do save states, and I will in between parts just to make sure I don't lose, like, like recordings of this or anything. I don't want to lose progress in between recordings or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm gonna have save states, but I won't abuse them. I can tell you that much. We have the main door, by the way. If we ever try to exit the main door... We have an FMV cutscene of Chris trying to do so. To, just to be blocked by one of the dogs. Yeah, I guess we're not leaving. Yeah, uh, at this point, looking at the first floor, we've been everywhere we can go. Because there's three doors in the left path that two of which are blocked on the other side, and one of which is locked with a sword key. There's two doors on this side, one of which is an armor key, one of which is a sword key. So, even though we just got the map of the first floor, we're immediately leaving the first floor. <laughs> Look at this staircase cutscene here. Who thought it'd be so intimidating? Chris, why do you gotta- why do you gotta look straight down at the stairs as you're going up? That seems like a horrifying thing to do. And I love the way music is implemented in this game, how there's moments where it's complete silence and you can just hear Chris's steps as he walks along. And moments like where you go in this room. I will never forget my first time going in this room. Did you hear that? 
My god. We got a shiny little small key over here in the corner. I'm gonna grab that for sure. The building music and the blood on the walls. Chris, what do you make of that? I hope this blood isn't for my teammates. Slowly open the door. It's suddenly a howling sound. The wind. Crows in the back. This moment, oh my god. Oh, we find a horde of... A horribly demolished corpse in the corner. Oh boy, it seems we've found a lot of those already. Actually, before we approach the corpse, just in front of him here, I believe we have another clip here. We're gonna take that. 45 bullets. Hey, we're loaded. It's Forrest. He's been pecked to death by crows. Uh, those would be the crows that did it, huh? Let's get out of here, Chris. Come on now. <laughs> we got crows, we got dogs, and we got m men. All zombies, all trying to kill us, and all around the mansion. Uh, let's go over in this door now. We can go this way. We got a few zombies in our path over here, who I don't want in our path. So I'm going to be removing. Let's equip that gun. And I think there's one right away here. Yep. Hello, mister. Bam. 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 He's down on the ground, but he's probably still alive, so equip the knife and give him a couple slashes. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. I thought so, motherfucker. Equip the gun again. Let's back up, back up, carefully. We gotta treat every encounter we have with care. And an important thing to note, he's still alive. You can tell, because when they're dead for good, the blood will start pooling up beneath them there. You can kinda see it. It's kinda difficult with the red carpet here. Also, we can reload at any time using the combined feature, which I like a lot. Yeah, I wanna clear out this hallway. Even though this door is currently locked with a carving of armor, that's great. Another armor key door. Uh, this door is also locked with carving of armor. <laughs> gonna get that armor key eventually. Hey, mister, I'm just gonna run past you. Because that door is locked from the other side. This door we can go in, however. And it's very imperative that we do. It is very imperative that we do indeed. Because in here we have an important book. We have a botany book about medicinal herbs. As you may know, there are many plants that have medicinal effects. Since ancient times, humans have been healing wounds and diseases using various plants. In this book, we're going to sample three herbs that grow around Raccoon Mountains and give their outlines as examples of plants with medicinal properties. Each herb has different colors and different effects as medical plants. The green one recovers physical strength, the blue one neutralizes natural toxins, while the red herb does not have any effect by itself. The red herb is only effective when mixed with other herbs. For example, if you mix this herb with the herb that strengthens physical recovery, the recovery effect will be tripled. By adjusting the amount and experimenting with these three herbs, you can create various kinds of medicines. But I'll leave the details in your hands, because that's the best way to acquire true knowledge. True that. And botany book has been filed. Oh yes, in the menu, I didn't show it off, but we have files for various books we have right now. Uh, don't have anything really. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's just telling us about medical herbs. Because we had that first aid spray that we used. Don't get used to that. That's kind of a rare... Far and few between kind of item. Ooh, we've unlocked this. So whenever you see that, that just means you, you wouldn't be able to enter from the other side. You're entering from the one side you can. And you've permanently unlocked it from that point on. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. I'm just gonna go down these stairs, don't mind me. <laughs> yeah, luckily they can't go downstairs. I could just shoot them from up here. You know what, I got the ammo to spare, why not? But Oh, shit. Hello! Oh, come on. Uh, He's right there. Uh... <laughs> How many bullets was that I wasted? My god. Can I get aimed at them right? No? Okay, at that point I'm just gonna leave him be. I am gonna kill the guy down these stairs though. I know there's a zombie here. I'm ready for him. Uh, quickly Chris, quickly Chris. Run around the corner. Run around the corner. Whoo! Okay. Now's our chance. Get him! Don't let him get close to you! Oh. Okay, I don't wanna let this guy get close to me because he is an acid spitter. He, uh, well he spits acid. Oh god, he got me! Get him off, get him off! Okay, I don't know why I'm switching the knife, just use the gun, we have ammo, we have ammo. <laughs> run this way, run this way. This door is locked from the other side, so we're cornered. I'm ready for you, motherfucker. Come here! Where are you? Come on! You're around there somewhere, I can't tell because of the camera angle. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing exactly what you see right now, but seeing from Chris's perspective may have been uh, more enlightening here. There we are. You dead? Yeah, the, the blood piled up. He's dead. Around this corner here we have... Would you look at that? One of the medicinal herbs they were telling us about. I will absolutely take that green herb. 
So yeah, the green herb recovers just plain old health, but if we can find a red herb and combine it, it recovers even more health than normal. As I believe on its own, it's actually weaker than the first aid spray we had. Oh well. Uh, save your progress with this. Not right now. I'm gonna go over to this very useful item in this kind of safe room. You know, this is a, a safe haven where zombies can't come in, they can't open doors yet. And I'm gonna use this chest here where we can store items to greatly help with our inventory. We're not using the knife. I don't... Mm, do I need the small key? I don't think I do. I am gonna grab... The, the chest comes with two clips right in it, so I'm gonna grab those and combine them with my current ammo to grab myself a nice healthy 62 bullets. 68 if you count the ones I currently have. In fact, I should reload. Here we have a chemical. I'm gonna put that in the chest as well, because we won't be using that for a little bit yet. And if I had picked up the emblem, I would put it in the chest now, but technically I don't think we had enough room. Uh, so yeah, this is our inventory management. It's very, very important. 